Uh, on the night. And during the night, Dean is going to make me into, I think, uh, various monsters. I think particularly Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Well, I think your tuxedo, it, it calls out for Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Very much. My character. rented tuxedo, I might add, right. from Al's formal wear. <laughs> Mr. Hyde had to rent his, too. All right, that's good. Perfect. And perfect. I think it's going to be kind of interesting to watch me turn into a creepy, crawly monster as we watch our creepy, crawly movie. Uh, and, of course, let's not forget Cynthia Cacklin. And Cynthia um, is an actress, as we told you last week, and she's going to be the lady answering the phones tonight. So uh, that's a nice looking lady you're going to be talking to. And yeah. you can also talk to uh, Dean and myself as the night goes on. And let's just tell you one thing before we get to those movies. Some of the prizes we're going to be giving away tonight, uh, a little extra excitement here tonight. Uh, General Cinema has given us uh, 10 pairs of tickets to give out. And these tickets are good for one month. And uh, Cynthia, what are some of the theaters that are included? Oh, uh, the Riviera, the Westchester, Hialeah, Cutler Ridge, uh, Galleria. What is that? Broward Mall, Pompano, and 170th Street. All right, we'll put our glasses on next time. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you same thing you. All right. And besides that, we have tickets to the Wilmecco theaters. That includes Dade Land and, uh, oh God, 163rd Street and many, many other theaters. And those tickets are good up until May 5th. That's a pair of tickets. And uh, for our grand prizes tonight, uh, how about this? We've got three pairs of tickets to Gabe Kaplan, who will be, uh, remember that? Uh, Welcome back, Cotter, with, yeah, uh, I think, John Revolta. Well, that was his, uh, <laughs> John Travolta. Revolta. Okay, <laughs> anyway. Uh, what's going to happen there? We're going to give away three pairs of tickets, and uh, they're worth about uh, $15 a piece. And the grand prize is not only the pair of tickets, but dinner at the Fountain Blue Laron Room. Mm. That little beauty uh, with the pair is worth about between $80 and $100. Okay, that'll be obviously later on tonight. Make you wait for that. Between the movies tonight, we're also going to show you a couple of fascinating student films. One's called Oxygen, which takes place in 1990. A real futuristic film. It's about 10 minutes long. And really the first MT video to come out of, uh, MTV video to come out of uh, the University of Miami. It's called Miami Breakdown by a group called The Toys, uh, who are right now, tonight, as we speak, playing at uh, Flynn's with a group called The Schoolgirls or something like yes, that. Yes, and the, the toys are terrific. They are. They're yeah. both a bunch of guys, and we'll show you that in between the first two movies. Now, the first movie is uh, <clears throat> Frankenstein, what? Frankenstein 1970, which was made in 1958. Really? That's right. <laughs> okay. It was made in 1950, I guess, obviously, as a futuristic, at that time, a futuristic film. Okay. Right. And uh, who's it star? You know, Dion, well, please, I hope you know, because I don't. Well, it stars Boris Karloff. Oh, who else? Okay. Yes. It's not the original Frankenstein, but it's one I know very little about, but we'll all find out together about it. And uh, the second movie is uh, something about souls for sale, or something really kind of strange like that. It sounds rather provocative. I'm looking oh, forward. It's about teenage okay. girls who get sold into slavery. That sounds fairly interesting. That's about 4 or 5 o'clock this morning. That could be fun. Who knows? Sounds like Fort Lauderdale. It sounds like a Roger Corman picture mm. to me. That's what it sounds like. Uh, one of those, El, you know, El Quico productions. But they're sometimes very interesting pictures. I have no idea about souls for sale. We'll find out later tonight. Okay, now, before we go into the movie, I thought we'd have a little, get you warmed up. Uh, as, as I said before, you're going to watch me transform. And Dean's going to show you on screen. He's going to stick fangs in me, and I'm going to have wild hair and makeup and the whole thing. I hope they're interested in that. I think they will be. Before we get into all that, let's just uh, show you uh, something about uh, how special effect makeup is done. We're going to show you, uh, in about 30 seconds, a little clip from a movie that Dean did. And Dean, tell us what we're going to see. Then you're going to illustrate how it's done. Right, we're, we're going to see a clip here. Uh, sometimes in makeup effects, uh, when we talk about effects with makeup, we're talking about you know, people suspending their disbelief and seeing something that a lot of times you know can't really exist in real life, but we see it happen, you try to believe it's going on. We're going to see uh, a lot of the effects nowadays, a lot of the, the, the more violent films and horror films, you have a lot more graphic things. We're going to see someone getting shot, but getting shot between the eyes and the back of the head blowing out. Well, that mm. sounds really good. We'll, 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 show, we'll show how the effect's done afterwards. See, wow. we'll see, the, see the finished product, and then we'll, we'll got a few pictures to show how it was uh, put together. Uh, you j okay. I hope you all have had dinner a long time ago. Anyway, uh, why don't we just uh, roll this little film. It lasts about two minutes. Let's watch someone get shot through the head and have their head explode, and then we'll show you how it's done. I know you all can't <laughs> wait. So let's take a look at that, I hope. My name is Tony Tanucci. I'm the narrator of this here film. Let me introduce you to Dave. He's a filmmaker. So, you want to make films, huh? Do you have the qualifications to make it in the film business? Are you artistic? Can you work with others, or do you have a short temper? Dave, do you have something for a headache? 
No. Next question is, now the biggest qualification to make films, do you do drugs? Great. Now you're ready to get started on your filmic career. What type of films do you want to make? Hmm, I don't know. Let's get out and look at a few different types of film you can make. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'd suggest getting rid of your roommate. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. I'll just put him with the others. Others? That's a clip from uh, a rather strange film that uh, Dean was involved with at the University of Miami with Barry Waldman, I believe. Yeah, Barry was the director on that. Uh, a classic in its time, of course, uh, <laughs> with a beautiful soundtrack that I hope you understood. The main thing we wanted to show you is the little man gets shot through the head, which right. I thought was very exciting, Dean. And I think at this point you are now going to thrill us all with graphic illustrations of how you do that in film. Okay. Well, what, what uh, we did with this effect, obviously, uh, you know, watching the clip, it, it goes by very quickly. But you see a fellow standing there who uh, looks normal, and then all of a sudden you see a hole appear in his head and the back of the head blow out. Well, obviously, to do this, we had to put what, what's known as an appliance. And we set an appliance on the forehead. We have a... Uh, an appliance, like picture. a dishwasher or something? Right. Uh, if you see, this is a still here of, of the actual uh, effect. If you notice on his forehead's actually built up and, and there is a hole in the appliance which has been flesh colored and into that uh, appliance at the top there are two tubes leading into it and uh, if we flip that around we can see on the other side. We're going to now turn the card around. It should be uh, extremely interesting. There we go. That is your, your basic hand. Oh, no, we, that's we'll the We'll get to that one in a minute. There's the hands coming All up right. next. There you go. Now, right here you can see the appliance uh, as it's on the forehead. This appliance is made of a material called Elvisite, a uh, high molecular plastic that uh, was built in layers and had a little sandwich, uh, thin air space in between. And you notice the two tubes that run through the hair into it. One tube carried compressed air. And once that hole was filled up, it looked like his forehead was normal. On the cue from the director, we shot compressed air through that, and at the same time, uh, they had a little charge blown off the back of the head, which splattered blood against the wall, so he saw the hole appear, and, and the blood come out the back and hit the wall. And then as he was sliding down the wall, and in the second shot you saw him, of him laying there, you see blood coming out the hole in the front, and that came through the second tube. So all of that, uh, you know, completes an entire uh, picture of a person looking like they're not prepared at all uh, with any phoniness to them, and then uh, you see the back of their head get blown out as the bullet wings through them. It's funny, that's become one of the most popular shots in film, I think, ever since Sam Peckinpah with The Wild Bunch started yeah. those blood bag business back in around the mid-60s. Uh, we've got a few more pictures before we go into our movie, and I think you're going to show us uh, something else. Love. Oh, that's gorgeous. Well, this is actually this is from, we might uh, want to show the other clip. This goes with oh, that other clip. We'll do that later. This is okay. going to be, this is... Uh, Actually, a clip for, which you'll be seeing later in the show from a movie called In Country, which was just shot here in right. Tampa, I believe, isn't it? This right here was a scene from, uh, uh, there's a factory accident that happens in the film, early in the film. Uh, one of the characters uh, uh, gets his arm accidentally caught in a uh, uh, high-powered machine, and it kind of tears his arm up. Now, that right there is actually a real arm with an appliance laid on top of it. If we flip that one around... Go ahead and flip that one around. Yeah. We can see the appliance that made it turn it around the other side. There we go. That actually was made out of foam rubber. It was sculptured in clay and then cast in foam rubber. Uh, the appliance was laid on top of the hand. The edges blended down and colored to match the hand. Hair laid on top. And we get the mangled arm. Uh, later in the shot, uh, when we see it, you can see that um, it looks like the, the drill is actually drilling around inside of that. Uh, when the, the, uh, our director, uh, Dave Nutter, asked us to do this shot, he thought, well, maybe we can just stick an artificial hand into the real drill. And I thought about it, and we figured that uh, if we could get a real hand in there twitching around, it would look <laughs> a lot more realistic. So we put a fake drill bit in, in the machine and had a real hand uh, with the appliance laid on top and actually was gouging gelatin out, which looked like flesh. And later when you see that clip, you'll see what it is. All right, I think that's, uh, I think at this point we'll stop with this because what's going to happen later, folks, we're going to show you the actual clip from In Country. And mm -hmm. I think at that point we'll go back into the stills which relate to it. Correct? Okay, okay. Very good. All right, now uh, when we come back, uh, well, after we get the movie started, we're going to have our first trivia question of the night. And uh, I want to warn you, Dean Gates is real nasty, a lot tougher than I am on these trivia questions. So let's get started right now with uh, Frank. Frankenstein 1970, which was made in 1958. 58. 
Hey, uh, I'm just as weird looking as ever. We're, uh, interesting enough, Dean, this is a uh, slow process. What's going on right now is Dean Gates, who is a uh, special effects makeup artist, and uh, Dean has worked on some feature films, and with some of the best in the world. Tom Savini, for instance, uh, is one of the men you've worked with. Yeah, I've worked with Tom on Eyes of a Stranger, and, uh, of course, Tom uh, became, uh, got his notoriety uh, on such films as uh, Dawn of the Dead, oh, yeah. Friday the 13th, the Burning Creep Show, uh, and I believe right now he's working on Friday the 13th Part 4 out in L.A. I feel so silly <laughs> with this on, but it'll get it'll get interesting as we go on, I'm sure. Yeah. This is going to take, by the way, about an hour before I guess we're really completely through with all this makeup, and it's going to start taking form a little bit later on. Anyway, Dean also, somebody else called and asked if there was any kind of a school in town that taught you about makeup, and there is a school uh, that deals with this sort of thing. And Yeah, there's uh, uh, the Berger Institute of Production Technology in uh, North Miami, and they teach uh, makeup uh, courses right. uh, about like what they teach if you were to be uh, go to the apprenticeship program out in L.A. for the uh, L.A. Uh, makeup unions out there. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a real specialized field in the business and a rather interesting one. Also, the University of Miami has theater makeup, I yes, believe. Yes, they do. Speaking of the University of Miami, uh, I feel so, feel so ridiculous talking about this. Speaking of the University of Miami, I, as a, a lot of you may know, I, I teach film there. And as a matter of fact, Dean is a graduate and mm -hmm. uh, did some very fine films himself for the University of Miami. We had a screening over at the university last week, which was sold out uh, two nights in a row and uh, showed about 16 or 17 student films and they're real good, let me tell you. And what I thought I'd do, uh, as long as we continue this gig on Saturday nights, uh, start doing it as a regular thing between the first and second uh, film, we would show a couple of these student films, and I think that uh, you're going to be uh, pretty interested in what you see. Uh, what we're going to show tonight is uh, two totally different films. The first one is a uh, really the first, it's interesting how students sort of imitate what's going on in the commercial world, and right now, uh, MTV, uh, rock video, is the big, uh, the big craze, and a lot of people want to go into that business, and it's going to expand and expand and expand. And the first film you're going to see is our first uh, MTV video. As a matter of fact, it was one of the basement tapes on MTV, and it was called Miami Breakdown, and uh, it was by uh, a group called The Toys, or about a group called The Toys, who, as I mentioned earlier in the show, are appearing tonight at Flynn's, and uh, interesting enough, from this videotape that we, uh, this film we made at the university, they have got uh, Columbia Records coming down tonight. As a matter of fact, they're watching them tonight for a possible record contract. And uh, this was done Great. at the university for a budget of about seven or eight hundred dollars. The same production might be worth uh, twenty thousand dollars or so done outside a university situation. So uh, Peter Spire is uh, one of the uh, players in the band, and he was one of our students, and he did this film. And uh, as soon as that's over, as soon as you get through seeing Miami Breakdown, which is about three four minutes long, you're going to see a film called Oxygen. And I thought Oxygen would be real apropos for tonight because we're looking at horror films and so forth. Oxygen is basically a science fiction film, and it takes place in 1990. And what's going on is the rarest commodity known to man at that point is air, fresh air, oxygen. Interestingly enough, that's why it's called Oxygen, <laughs> I'm sure. And uh, a little earlier we saw uh, Barry Waldman's name, and Barry's one of the people involved in this particular film. Barry was the one who had done that crazy thing with the uh, gut bullet through the head we showed earlier. Yeah, tonight. that was a part of a uh, film that he worked on. All right. And also, uh, Kevin Lane was involved in this film, and Kevin now works uh, with the men in the I think, blue suits or the gray suits. I get that mixed up over an instant replay. He goes all over the world now doing video interviews with rock stars all over the country. Kevin, again, this was his last film with us. And the other fellow is uh, Giorgio. How's, what's Giorgio's last name? I, it's uh, a tough one to pronounce. Uh, Spera. Huh? Spera. 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 Giorgio is a uh, fantastically interesting guy. Giorgio is now living in L.A. and is in town just for the week to uh, show this film. And so the second film you're going to see is called Oxygen. Again, it's about eight or nine minutes long, and it'll give you a sense of what these student films are all about. So why don't we go right now and watch, first of all, Miami Breakdown with the toys, uh, with featuring Peter Spire, and then we'll see a film called Oxygen, which is about 1990. Sounds interesting. <laughs>
the 1990s, a hydrogen energy satellite fell out of its Earth orbit. Plunging into the atmosphere, the explosion vaporized the ozone layer and destroyed over 80% of our planet's oxygen. Today, in 1996, oxygen is a highly regulated commodity, and illegal traffic is sanctioned by death without trial. People are paying for something they never thought they'd have to pay for. I finally found someone with better stuff than you, Brandon. Oh, yeah? Who's that? Wouldn't you like to know? I got a job for you tomorrow night. You interested? It's worth five cylinders. I'll call you back into the tail. some information for you that I think you'll find very interesting.
time, Brandon. You look well. And you are more beautiful than ever. some merchandise that I may be interested in buying. My word travels fast. I need to find out about it eventually. It's called Micron, and it's the ultimate in high-density oxygen. Oh, but unfortunately, I've already made it to you. You're not even going to give me a sample? Full time sake? Let's go. This party's over. I promised myself I'd never go to another one of Robert's parties. Yeah, but we both know you can't ever keep a promise. I'll tell you what. You give me your ignition code and the section number, and uh, I'll pick up your transport and bring it to you. How thoughtful. It's in section C7. The code is 936J. It's parked next to Robert's new bar day. But, be careful. My car is very valuable to me, especially tonight. Trust me. Brandon, what makes you think that I can trust you?
feeling lucky? Then it's time to cash in. Let Little Palm Tours fly you to fabulous Aruba with first-class hotel accommodations so you can test the waters by day and the tables by night. Live your fantasies at the world-famous King International Casino, where luck and skill are the big payoffs. But here's the best part. Airfare... All right, uh, we're... <laughs> it's me, uh, George Capewell, uh, hanging in there. We're getting close. Uh, we're not too close, but uh, we're, we're working on it. Another major step coming up. Uh, we're going to start coloring the skin, I think, next chance, right, I hope, because I want to start getting strange looking okay. real quick. I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, two student films from the University of Miami, and I've got about 14 more to throw at you, all just a little bit different. And uh, really some great stuff. And uh, that's what's nice about those student films uh, is that they're all different. They're all the students have a different vision. That one reminded me a little bit of a film called Blade Runner, which I happen to like a whole lot. It was out about uh, two summers ago, I think. Very stylistic. Uh, the story got a little bit confused to me at the end there, but I really love the style of that film and the lighting and the whole bit. Very well done. Anyway, uh, what's going to happen right now is uh, just uh, for a minute or so, uh, Dean is now uh, putzing around here with the bottom of my eyes. I oh, wait, before we get to my eyes, I must say again, we do forget, we got some, so many things that are mine tonight. We forgot to announce the winner of the trivia question the last time around. Uh, yeah, the last question Which was, was about a day and a half ago, I yeah, think. Yeah, it seems like Yeah, it, right? okay. Uh, the last question was, uh, after Boris Karloff uh, played the Frankenstein monster in the first three films of the series in uh, Universal in the 1930s, uh, the decade of the 1940s opened up with a fourth film in the series, and a different actor uh, played the role in Ghost of Frankenstein, and the answer...